Hi, I'm Mark and I'm all about psychology, tech and productivity. And in today's video, we're gonna be taking a quick look, unboxing and setup of the new Apple Siri remote and comparing it against the old style, very slippery um, Apple TV remote. Not many people know this, but you can in fact order this remote totally independently and separately without having to pay for the entire Apple TV 4K setup. Um, so this will run you about 55 pounds as opposed to the full amount that it will cost for the full Apple TV 4K package. And a shout out to my fellow Yorkshireman Spawn Point for pointing that out. Let's take a look at what you get in the box. So here's the old remote and the new one. Let's take a look at what's inside. Here's some paperwork. A nice new USB to lightning cable. Interesting that we don't have a USB type C connection yet. And here's the new remote. And instantly I can see this is heavier than the previous version. It's taller too and quite a bit thicker. This is definitely less likely to get lost down the back of your sofa. So next up, we're gonna set this up on my Apple TV and see how easy it is to pair and start using. So here I am in my Apple TV settings and I've gone over to remotes and devices. Now all you need to do to connect the remote is press the power button and it'll start pairing. And because this uses the A12 Bionic chip, it's a case of just bringing the remote up to the Apple TV box to pair it. It does need to be very close. Once you've done that, it's all paired and you're good to go. And here we can see our updated controls. You still have the touch sensitive pad at the top, but also have the option to scroll around just like the classic iPod controller, as well as up, down, left and right. And I can see this being particularly helpful if you use your Apple TV for gaming. There's a dedicated back button, which replaces the menu icon on the previous version. The Siri launcher is now situated on the side of the remote, which does make it less easy to trigger by accident. And your play and pause and volume controls are right there as before. This is a really nice remote to hold. It feels weighty in the hand, and it's just a really nice piece of engineering. So here's that new power button. You have to press and hold it to switch everything off. So there we have our initial unboxing and setup of the Apple Siri remote. Um, I'm really happy with this as a first impression. It's so much heavier, much sturdier. It's very well made, well built, as you'd expect from Apple device. Um, and I would definitely recommend picking this up if you've already got the rather flimsy, plasticky previous version. Just the number of extra buttons that you get in addition to the weight and sturdiness of this device just make it a really good choice. And I'm, I know I'm already more likely to pick this rather than use my phone or anything else to control my Apple TV. In the meantime, if you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, drop a comment if you're feeling really generous, hit the bell icon, and you'll be notified about future videos. I'll see you in the next one.